Hey everyone, welcome to BizTech TV. I'm Michi Valeriano here with Rebecca Fannin, author of Silicon Dragon and contributor to Forbes Magazine and the Huffington Post. Welcome, Rebecca. Thank you. So, Rebecca, you've been covering uh, the technology and finance industries for a really long time now. What got you into China? What got me into China? Well, it's a long story, really. It's a long Silk Road. Um, but uh, I started going to China in 1992. And I went to Hong Kong in 92. I was editing an international business magazine at that time and went to mainland China and Beijing and Shanghai. And uh, from there, uh, started writing for some magazines in Hong Kong, covering China and covering Asia as things were booming. This was pre-financial crisis, pre-dot-com boom. Yeah. <laughs> and then, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, and then during the dot-com boom and bust, I was at Red Herring uh, covering China and international. Mm -hmm. uh, so I had a really front row seat on what was going on. Right. Um, and that's really how I really became immersed in the whole topic. So that's where the fascin fascination started. Exactly. Right. And what led you or inspired you to write the book Silicon Dragon? Well, I started going to mainland China regularly in about 1999 uh, as a journalist. And I was really a pioneer at that time. There were very few business journalists, very few technology journalists. And that's not the case today. But then, 1999, was really a trailblazer. <laughs> and, uh, it was quite a lot of fun because I got to see people like Robin Lee of Baidu and Jack Ma of Alibaba without, you know, a tremendous amount of PR, right. you know. Without their persona. So exactly. And and I, I saw them before they became well known. Okay. Um, and so that was really, really fun. And I just enjoyed interviewing people like that and meeting them. And they were an inspiration to me. Right. And I thought that their story should really be told. Okay, so Silicon Dragon was published in 2008. Um, What's changed since then in China, and have you made any predictions that have come to pass in the book? Well, uh, one of the premises of the book was from made in China to invented in China, mm -hmm. and I think we are starting to see that happen, happening in areas like mobile telephony, where, ch where China leads the world in the, the, you know, the largest number of mobile phone users. So granted, that because of that, they tend to be the technology innovators as well, and they develop their own standards. Right. So we're seeing that. We're seeing it around energy efficiency and clean tech. Um, these are trends that I had noted in the book. You know, another major trend that I'm seeing in China that's really happening very fast is this evolution from the returnee Chinese entrepreneur to the local homegrown entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. Is there a difference between the two? Yeah, yeah, exactly. There is a huge difference. <laughs> <laughs> and are they complementing each other currently, or in your opinion, are they competing with each other? I think that story is yet to be written. Um, in one case, there definitely is a huge clash. We have uh, Ren Ren and Kai Zhen, both of them in the social media space. One of them is uh, set up by a returnee Chinese entrepreneur, by Zhou Chen, Stanford grad, MIT grad, went back to China. His, now, his company has now gone public on, on the New York Stock Exchange. Um, he raised a huge amount of finance before that, almost $400 million, almost $500 million. And his parallel, the Chinese homegrown entrepreneur, is, is uh, Bing Chao, who's uh, the founder of Kaizhen. So the two of them went head to head with rival Kaizhen sites. One was called Kaizhen. The other was called Kaizhen 001. Wow. And <laughs> Who's winning? Well, right now, I would say Ren Ren is in the lead um, because they've gone public already. They have uh, more users. Uh, Kaizhen 001, I think, still will go public. The prediction is that it will go public this year. Um, but there, it's really a clash in personalities and style. These two, and they're both in the same space. Right, that's very interesting. Um, what is it about Chinese culture or history or tradition that makes this kind of resurgence possible? Well, I think China has long been known as a very innovative nation. It's where uh, silk and paper and printing and all, uh, lots of other, the compass were invented. Gunpowder. Yeah, and gunpowder, <laughs> right. <laughs> so we have, we have this historical underpinning 
And, and um, I think we're seeing it bubbling forth now mm -hmm. in, in new areas, in tech uh, areas. Part of, uh, part of your book deals with uh, the common American conception that Chinese uh, technology businesses are just copycats of innovations yeah. that Silicon Valley started with. Yeah. Is that still true? And, uh, and, how are, or, and if it is, how do the Chinese address that? Yeah, exactly. It is still true. Uh, there's about, about 1,500 Groupon Chinas. <laughs> <laughs> some of them are very well funded and others are not. So I think we'll see some settling out on who's going to take that space. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, in just every field, Tumblr has a copy, Quora has a copy, Yelp has a copy. Uh, the copycat thing is not worn out yet. It's still going strong. Right. Uh, but what you're starting to see is micro innovations mm -hmm. where tweaks of ideas that worked in the, in the West and, and is, is it more yeah. of just customizing it to the Chinese market, yeah. the Chinese sensibility? Exactly. And so what about Chinese-U.S. relations? Is, is there such a thing with regard to technology? Are they sharing information, trying to work together? Or is it mostly just a head-to-head -head competition and trying to see who enters the other person's market, the other country's market first? Yeah, you know, it, it's, it's interesting because so much of the funding for what's happening in China has originated from Silicon Valley. So in that way, it's not a competition at all. It's everybody win-win. <laughs> but um, for particular business models and sectors, I think it's what works in your own market, generally. Um, what works best in your own market. I think Facebook is talking about entering China. That'll be an interesting one to watch. Right. Um, I do think we have seen a lot of American brands fail in China. Google is probably uh, the, the most shining example. Yeah, and yeah. eBay. Mm -hmm. um, so it's been hard for the American brands to get a gain a foothold. And vice versa, have, are the Chinese more successful at gaining a foothold in American markets? Mm, they're not yet, because partly because of the language barrier. Mm -hmm. But I think you're seeing Tencent coming in, you're seeing Alibaba coming in. I think you will see more of that, um, but it's really on the frontier. Okay. Well, finally, what's next for Rebecca Fannin? What, what are you working on right now? Uh, I've been slaving away at my new book. Uh -huh. And my new book is coming out this fall. Uh, it's being published by Wiley. Mm -hmm. um, I'm very excited about it. Uh, What's the, it about? Uh, it's really taking this theme of Silicon Dragon and talking about Startup Asia. So the title is Startup Asia. It's all about the innovation boom from China to India to other markets. Uh, but China and India are the two king pens of the book. And I talk about trends that originated in China that have gone elsewhere into India into Singapore, into Taiwan. It's very interesting to see the parallels and how it's all merging together. And is that a scary thought for American investors? Is I mean, is do you see in the future China gaining dominance over the space that Americans have held for so long? It's possible in some areas that uh, China will have the lead on new ideas, in particular tech sectors. Right. Well, we better watch out then. And I'm sure you're going to be here to tell us all about it when it does happen. Rebecca, I hope thank so. you so much for thank joining you. us. Thank you.